Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're creating a fully editable text effect in Adobe Illustrator, this sort of retro look to the text that you see on the screen now. Not only is this going to be a fully editable effect, so you can change the text at any time, but you can also change the font. And we're going to save it as a graphic style so we can use it over and over again. So I'm just going to type in here the document size. It's going to be 1000 pixels by 600 pixels in size. I am working in RGB color mode. I'll click Create. If you want to use the same values as I'm using, I would suggest that you create a document that is about this same size, about 1000 by 600. It's going to mean that the dimensions that I'm using are going to work pretty well for you too. I'm using Myriad Pro and I'm going to set it up to bold. What you'll do best with, at least to start off with, is a fairly thick, fairly regular looking typeface. It's just going to be easier to see how everything's going to work. I'm going to start with 120 points. Now, I just bought a really cute van, so I'm going to use the word van life for my text. I think we can go a little bit bigger on this font, so holding the shift key, I'm just going to drag it to make it a little bit bigger. So this is the type that we're starting out with. With the type selected, we're going to the Appearance panel. Now you can get to that by choosing Window and then Appearance. You will need the Appearance panel visible for this effect. Otherwise, you just won't be able to see what's going on. So you can see here that there's no fill and no stroke. Type works a little bit differently to shapes in Illustrator. So the first thing we're going to do is double click on characters here so that we can get access to the colors that are being used and we're going to turn them off because this dialogue is not going to help us at all, this area here. So we're going to come out here to type no appearance. Now you can see that our type has disappeared here, but that's just fine. The reason why we don't use this interface is because you can't change the order of things. And we need to not only change the order of things, but we need to stack a whole heap of fills and strokes on top of each other. And there's just not the tools here to do it. So we want to be working in this mode here. And so I'm going to click here to add a new fill. And when I do, it adds a stroke as well. So I've got sort of half of what I want right now. Now the fill is going to be the fill color of the type. So I'm going to start with a sort of bluey green here. So that's going to be the fill color of my type. And then I'm going to put a stroke on top of it. And the stroke is going to be white and it's just going to be a one point stroke. Now this is a little bit difficult to see right now, the white stroke, because we're working on a white background. So before we go too much further, let's add a background to this document. So I'm creating a rectangle that is the size of the document. I'm going to choose a color to use and I'm going to do something quite opposite the color that we're using for the type. So it's going to be pretty easy to see. I'm going to square this up on the artboard and then move it behind everything else with object arrange, send to back. In the layers palette, that means that we've got our color on the bottom and our text on the top. So we can see the type, that's really important. Here, I'm just going to lock down this background because that means if I grab it by mistake, it's not going to do anything, it can't be grabbed effectively. So now it's a little bit easier to see our white border. I need to make sure that I select my text before I do anything else. Now, you might think that it would be easier to get a thick border by just increasing the stroke weight. And that would work, except that we're not going to be able to do our shadow. The shadow is going to have bumps in it. It's going to cause us all sorts of problems. So there's a different way of increasing the stroke weight here. And that is to take this stroke and make a duplicate of it and shrink it a little bit. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to grab this stroke here. We're going down here to the new icon drop it on there so we've got a second stroke. Now with this stroke selected, just make sure you've got the stroke selected here so it should have a blue line through it. We're going to choose Effect and then Path and Offset Path. Now you can see really clearly what Offset Path does. What it does is it takes the path that we just created, the second stroke, and it offsets it. And in this case, it's offset at 10 pixels. So it's 10 pixels around the rest of the piece of type. Well, we want it to be on the inside. So instead of plus 10, we want minus one. 
And so if I do minus one, you can see that this stroke's thickened up a little bit. And it's thickened up in a way that is more manageable for us. And so we need to do that a second time so that we get an even thicker version. So grab the top one, which has already got the offset path attached to it because it's going to speed things up a little bit. Drag it onto the plus icon so you make another copy of it. Click on offset path. And of course, it had a minus one. Well, we're going to make that a minus two. So the top one is going to be offset by an extra pixel. So we've got three strokes. This is the top one. You can see it's slightly inset. This is the one underneath, which is a little bit inset. And this is the one at the very bottom, and it's around the fill. So by building up our stroke this way, we have the ability to control things a little better than we otherwise would. So the next thing we're going to do is put the brown inside here, the thing that's going to create the shadow. And for that, we need to offset it as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this stroke, the one at the very top, because it's already got some settings in place, which will speed things up for me. I'm going to drag and drop this on the new icon, exactly the same way as we've been doing. And I want this to be brown, so I'm going to select a brown color. You can see the brown color really clearly now. But what I need to do is to bring it behind all these strokes. So I'm going to pick this one up and I'm going to drag it under the white stroke, under the last white stroke, and above the fill. So these items here are in a stacking order. So they're stacked on top of each other. So there's the fill at the bottom. Then there's that stroke, which has now disappeared. That's fine because it's hidden behind this stroke up here. And then we've got the three strokes that we added. Well, this one, it's offset correctly. It's offset minus two, which is what we need it to be. But we can't see it because it's directly behind this one. So what I'm going to do is move it. And the way we move it is we select it, making sure that this sort of highlighting is on the stroke that we want to move. And we go up to Effect, Distort, and Transform, and then Transform. And we're going to move it 1.1. So you're going to type 1.1 in the horizontal and in the vertical. And then you're just going to click OK. And you can see that that has brought this in so we can actually see it clearly now. So now we've been able to build in a little bit of depth into our type. So the next thing we need to do is to build a shadow in behind it that will turn it into 3D. For this, we need just a stroke. So I'm going to click here on New Stroke. And it's just added one up here without the offset and the transform. So just make sure that if you add a new stroke, you know which one you've just added in, because it doesn't have all the other features applied to it, which is quite correct. So I'm just going to click on a green color. So I'm going to use green color for my shadow. And this stroke, I'm going to pull underneath the fill. So I want it at the very bottom of everything, but above that word character. So there's my green stroke. We can't see it because it's underneath absolutely everything, but that's just fine because what we're going to do is use a transform effect on this. So again, highlighting this, going up to Effect, Distort, and Transform, and then Transform, we're going to apply our transform effect. Now with the transforming, what I want to do is to make sure that I get a smooth transformation. I don't want little steps in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it a really small amount. I'm going to move it 0.1 pixels. So it's a really, really tiny movement. But if I do lots of tiny movements, I'm going to get a smooth edge. If I do just a few very large movements, then I'm not going to get that smooth edge. So I'm going to come down here to Copies, and I'm going to increase this. Now I'm using the Shift and the Up arrow key, because that allows me to move it 10 at a time. So I'm just adding 10 copies at a time. And you can see now we're building this three-dimensional effect. And you just stop when you get to however much of a dimensional effect you want to see. Now, if you don't like the colors, that's fine. Let's just ignore that for now. Let's look at the size of this dimensional effect we're getting. And when you're right, when you're happy with it, just click OK. I'm, <laughs> I'm not happy with the color at all, but that's an easy fix. I'm just going to come in here and grab a deeper color. So I'm going to click away from the type for a minute and have a look and see what we've got. We've got a dimensional white stroke around it. We've got a sort of bluey green fill. We've got a little bit of a 3D effect with the sort of drop shadow effect on it. And then we've got a little bit of shadowing here to add some depth to it. 
So if we're happy with this effect, what we're going to do is we're going to make a graphic style out of it. So you'll want to do the graphic styles panel. I've got mine here. You can also get to it by choosing window and then graphic styles. You're going to select over the text and you'll just click here on the plus symbol and that adds a brand new graphic style. So let's have a look and see how we're going to use that. I'm going to click the type tool. I'm going to click in the document and I'm going to type a different word. So my new van is a Westphalia. So let's just go and type the word Westphalia. Now I'm using the same font and font size here and I can apply this same effect to the type by selecting it and just clicking on the graphic style. So I haven't had to do anything. This graphic style can be used on different pieces of text. Now it's not limited to being used on Myriad Pro, bold for example. So we could change the type. For this, what I suggest that you do is you look for a typeface that is fairly blocky and just test them out. You'll find that not all typefaces will give you quite the same result. I found some difficulties with the letter M and N in the, around these sorts of areas where things can get a little bit weird. So just be prepared to be a bit flexible in terms of the typefaces that you use, but you will find you get the best results with typefaces that are a little bit bold, a little bit thick, not dissimilar to the typeface that you use to actually create the effect. Now, if you don't like the colors, that's an easy solution. Let's select over this piece of type and let's go to the recolor artwork tool. This is the new tool in Illustrator 2020 and later. If you're working in earlier versions of Illustrator, yours will look a little bit different. You can get to what yours looks like by just clicking advanced options. So this is the more typical recolor artwork tool. Just going to close this side panel. I don't need that right now. These are the colors in this piece of art here. If I click on edit, I can get access to these colors and right now they're linked. So if I drag on a color, all of the other colors change in accordance with the movement that I made. They're all moving in the relationship that they have with each other. So you can go in all sorts of directions and choose different looks for your type. Now, if you want to be a little bit more flexible with your type colors, you can click here to unlink the Harmony colors. Now you can take these colors to wherever you want them to be. So you can split them and take them in different directions. Just be aware of which is your shadow color. This is my shadow color. You can see that when I drag it around, it's affecting the shadow at the back of the text. This is my text color. And this is the sort of inside shadow inside the letters so that you can make that whatever color you like. And you could even lighten it if you wanted to. I wouldn't. I would try to make it a darker color simply because of the way that we've designed this type to look. If you're happy with the way the type looks, just click OK. And you could save this also as a graphic style. Just go to the graphic style panel and click the plus sign to add it as a graphic style. Now, if I select this type and click on the graphic style, well, color has now been applied to the type as well, of course, as that effect. Now, graphic styles aren't permanent in the sense that if I create another file here in Illustrator, Let's just create something here. You'll see that the graphic style I created in the previous document is not in this list. We would need to save this. So you'll go to the flyout menu here. So you can save this as a graphic style library. Illustrator is going to pick the right place for it to go. So don't worry about where you're putting it. Just put it wherever Illustrator suggests. So I'm just calling mine Helen. I'll click save. Let's go to this document. Let's click here on the flyout menu and I want to open a graphic style library. It's user defined and here is the Helen graphic style library I just created. So when I click on it, here are these graphic styles. I'll just click to add them to my document. And now if I type a piece of type, let's just make that bigger. So now if I create some type, I can select over that type and just apply these styles to it by just selecting the type and clicking on the style. And just to prove it that the type is fully editable, we're going to change this to 
a different letter and you can see that the effect is being applied to those different letters. This effect is 100% editable. I hope that you've enjoyed this video and that you've learned things about Illustrator of which you were previously unaware. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. Until next time, my name's Helen Bradley. Thank you so much for joining me here on my YouTube channel.